Hello everyone. This is just a video to say thank you and to answer some questions. So if you're looking for construction, this is not the video that has any of that in it. Thank you to everyone. Number one, thank you to SV Seeker. Thank you to the whole crew. Thank you to everyone who's given me comments and ideas like butyl tape, the putting a fan on the transformer inside of my welder. Here we go with the questions. One of the questions was about the dimensions. So we're looking at the bow right now. The very front is five feet. But even once you get right about here, I'm standing up straight and I'm six foot three. The height of the roof at the beginning of the pilot house is seven feet. At the end of the pilot house, at the rear of the pilot house, the roof is seven feet, seven inches. The pilot house roof is approximately eight feet, 10 inches. The whole boat is going to weigh approximately 8,000 pounds, including everything, ballast, the mast, and everything it needs to sail. The total ballast provided by the keel will be approximately 2,400 pounds. On the bottom, I'm going to bolt on approximately 1,000 pounds. So that will hang approximately four feet below the water line. If the amount of ballast I bolt on to the bottom doesn't feel like enough, then I can always bolt on more. Many people have commented about how thin the sheet metal on the hull is. It's 11 gauge, which is 0 0.125 inches. 11 gauge, its tensile strength is 51,000 PSI, and its yield strength is 36,000 PSI. It's hard to get numbers to compare to fiberglass because it depends on how thick it is and what kind of cloth and kinds of other factors about the resin. But the best number I got from a composite company was 30,000 PSI on the yield. I couldn't find any tensile. One of the questions was about trailering. How am I going to get this to the ocean? So on the bottom, I've welded on a attachment point for the keel. It has a bunch of holes in it, which I can also use to weld on a very low profile wheeled cart of some kind, which can be winched onto this car trailer. This car trailer is 26 feet long total. It's an 8,000 pound winch. I used to use it when I did car racing. I'm going to tow it with this three quarter ton truck. It has a 383 Chevy with a 400 turbo transmission. I built this motor myself in that shed 40,000 miles ago. I've towed a ton of stuff with it and it's still running. In order to make the interior easier to build, I'm going to put it all in before I weld on the back of the hull. It will all be easily removable so that I can test the hull for water tightness. I'm going to fill the whole hull with water up until about this mark, which is way above the water line, but just to make sure. I'm going to look at all the welds over a period of 24 hours and make sure that none of them are leaking through any pinholes that they might have. I'll fix anything I find and that way I'll know before I launch it that it's actually watertight. About the integrity of the welds over time, whether they'll split under all of that stress, I'm not worried about it because of the technique I've used to reinforce all of the seams. You can see that there's a foot of reinforcement across each weld. One. So the longitudinal supports help to reinforce the strength of the transverse 
worlds. As for launch dates, my fantasy launch date is May of 2018. Maybe that will turn into October. To me, launch means that I actually put it in the water and it floats. I hope to cruise for about five years, see the world. Some people have commented that I don't know what I'm doing. You're right, I don't. If I did know what I was doing, I'd be trying to learn about something else. I wouldn't be building the boat if I already knew how to do it. That's part of the fun, is just trying to figure it out. I'm going to try something new and see if it floats, see if it's strong enough. If it is strong enough, imagine what people could do with 11 gauge steel. What if you built a 26 foot steel boat? You could do it for half the cost because it's going to take about half the material, half the time. As long as we're talking about time, if I spent twice the amount of time that I have so far, and so far I've spent 800 hours, if I spent twice that amount of time, I could make a really beautiful boat. Doug over at SV Seeker said, this thing is not going to win any beauty awards. And he is exactly right. He nailed it on everything that he said about my style or my boat. The rest of this video is about the surfboard. It has some relevance because I might paint the boat the same way that I paint this surfboard. I want to make it look like wood. You can see it sort of comes out like wood when you're going along. All it is is a bunch of ridges and I put some silicone on the outside to get a rubber seal. I don't really like how much is here. I'm going to spread that over so that it has that wood grain. You can see in the glare that it actually has a wood grain to it. 